Now that I have my basic form layout in place, I'm going to turn my attention to the back end, the database. And here it is in Microsoft Access. It's very simple really, just three tables. TBL customers, which contains details of the customers of course. TBL seats, which has one row for each seat in the auditorium. I'll say more about this one in just a moment. And then TBL bookings, which ties the two together. This shows which customer has booked which seats. Looking at TBL customers, first of all, you can see here, I've just got a customer ID, first name, last name, and postcode. Of course, later on, I could add more to this, the customer's full address, a telephone number, an email address, for example. But at the moment, all I really need is a customer ID. The convention I've used for the customer ID is the initials followed by a three digit number. So for example, the first John Smith might be JS001. If I had a hundred John Smiths, each wanting to book a ticket, then the last one would be JS100. I suppose that of course depends on what kind of show it is. <clears throat> Moving swiftly along. The seat table is really important that we get this right. The data in here won't change, assuming that the auditorium doesn't change. Let's take a look. We've got a seat ID, which is unique for each seat in the auditorium. I've got 160 seats in mine, so the seat IDs go up to 160. Notice that seat ID 160 is row H number 20. Now back on my user interface, I can see that row H 20 is picture box 160. Notice how they correspond to each other. Let's look at another one. Here, for example, I can see seat 148 is row H8. Row H8 is picture box 148. I've gone to some trouble to make sure that the seat ID maps to the picture box number. So from the programmer's perspective, seat ID 36 will be picture box 36. But of course, from the ticket buyer's perspective, that's seat B number 16. So looking at the bookings I've got here, I can see that customer AL001, that's uh, Ada Lovelace, has booked seats number 8, 9 and 10. Seats 8, 9 and 10 are A8, A9 and A10. What else have I got? Customer HL001, in other words, Hedy Lamar, has booked seats 149 and 150. Seats 149 and 150 are H9 and H10. So Hedy Lamar has booked these two seats on the back row of the auditorium. Finally, the last thing I've done in my database is to relate these tables together. So if I look at tools, relationships, I can see that I've established the links between these tables. Something else I've done as well is when I was drawing these links in, I've selected the option to enforce referential integrity. Now that means I won't be able to make a booking for a customer that doesn't already exist. And furthermore, I won't be able to book a seat that doesn't exist. So that's my database. I think it's essential to get some data in here before you begin coding. Just enter it manually, but it needs to be there or you can't really see what's going on. Take your time when you're putting the seat IDs in as well. It's important that the seat ID matches the picture box ID for the row and seat number in the auditorium. Get this right and everything will be pretty straightforward after that.